Uh-oh, Utah. This kind of looks like a block in Los Angeles. I'd heard about how the homeless problem is spread this far west, and people were kind of right. It's nothing like what they're seeing in California, but it's a thing here. And people around here are worried, worried, worried. However, I didn't come to Utah to bring you images of our country's decline. And I didn't take this Mountain West road trip to point out everything wrong with this country either. If you've watched this channel long enough, you know that I take these long journeys where I go across different regions to show you what it's like to live there. Most of my viewers are realists who seem to enjoy watching bad things like stories on places that are struggling or dangerous or run by liberals. But this, this isn't going to be that kind of trip. Sorry to disappoint you sickos out there. Oh, it'll be damn good, and we're going to see a lot of fascinating stuff. But the thing is, the Mountain West isn't bad. Compared to most of the places I've been, this is going to be a different tale. It'll be one of change, progress, and a glimpse at the past. I promise you'll like it. I mean, the Mountain West deserves to have its story told, too. And there's no better time to do it than in the summertime. I spent the entire month of July here in 2023. Right now, we're starting in just about the center of it all. This is Salt Lake City, Utah. A very interesting place indeed. Welcome to the best place to live in the country, everyone. This is Utah, hombre. You're probably like, Utah? I know, that's exactly what I thought too. Does it look good to you? Well, it doesn't matter what you think. The internet says this is the best place. And that means it's a great place to begin a major road trip. So where are we anyways? Salt Lake City's up in the northern part of Utah, right on the banks of the Great Salt Lake. This is the capital of Utah. To the north and south is a giant sprawl that goes 60 miles in both directions. They call this the Wasatch Front because we're at the base of the Wasatch Mountains. And this place is booming. 90% of Utah's population lives in this region of the state. And every day, 150 more people move here. It's the biggest Utah boom since the original boom when the Mormons came in the 1850s. If you didn't know it, Utah's now the fastest growing state in the country. I know, right? In this first stop, we're going to marvel at the sprawl and try to understand why so many people are moving here and why this is now called the best place to live. Hint, I don't really get it. I mean, it's better than California, but... As you probably know, the West Coast is struggling right now. California, Oregon, and Washington just aren't good places to raise a family anymore. They're expensive, filled with crime, and they're crowded and filled with homelessness. There's parts of the West Coast seeing their populations shrink faster than ever. And a lot of the families leaving liberal land are coming here to Utah. Because right now, Utah doesn't have a lot of that stuff. So why Utah? Well, for one, the economy here is doing very well. There's a low unemployment rate and a budget surplus. 
There's a lot of companies moving here to run their operations. There's so many tech companies coming to Salt Lake City that they now call it the Silicon Slopes. I saw all sorts of gleaming, shiny new buildings up and down the entire corridor when I drove around. All these new companies coming in. And look at the latest U.S. News and World Report rankings. Utah ranks high in health care, the schools are good, and the crime isn't too bad either. The weather's nice. There's bright sunshine and beautiful scenery. I think there's more national parks than anywhere else except Alaska and California. I still saw snow on the mountaintops when I landed here in late June. I had heard that people complain about a pollution problem here, but I didn't see much of that. And there wasn't much wind blowing the hot days I was here. The people here are into the outdoors, and overall the population seems fit and healthy and in a good mood. I spent enough time here to see that most people are pleasant and courteous, except for the drivers. They might have the worst drivers in Salt Lake City than anywhere else I've seen except for Oakland. But people come here from California and they're like, wait, we can leave our bikes unlocked? You mean everything isn't behind plastic at the CVS? Hey, where's all the bums? This is great. But all that good is turning into kind of a bad. It's changing fast here. Maybe too fast. Some people here feel Utah's in crisis mode. You want to talk about growing pains? The metro area here is on the brink of an affordable living crisis. They just can't build homes fast enough, and it's also very expensive here now. The average cost of a home in Salt Lake City is $550,000. It's more expensive here than Austin, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. And, uh-oh, rumor is Salt Lake City's due for a housing correction. And some say there might even be a housing price crash here. Good lord, that's far from where we were here 10 years ago. I mean, they're trying to keep up with demand. A lot of the wide open spaces that were desert or farmland have been turned into densely packed communities, apartments, townhouses, condos, strip malls. There's a lot of farming towns with dirt roads and pickup trucks that are now being merged into organized communities with HOAs. You got to make at least a hundred grand a year here as a family to afford it. Some people are having to rent their bedrooms out so they can make their mortgage payments. That sucks. And that's all new. And that's because this area is not doing too bad. And Salt Lake City even has billionaires in town now. You see fancy cars on the highway and bougie houses. And everybody has to have ski passes. I even heard there's a bunch of people getting plastic surgery now. I know. It all just doesn't feel very Utah anymore. Well, as you can imagine, longtime Salt Lakers aren't too happy about this. There's a lot of go back to California. We're full floating around these days. Not too long ago, the governor of Utah made a big speech and he said, stay in California. We can't take you in as refugees anymore. <laughs> That's funny. I guess he's worried about the housing and water shortage in town. I know about how much they dislike Californians here. When I got the rental car, I went to Starbucks to get a drink. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what license plate I have on my car. I didn't even check that. I was like, please tell me I don't have a California plate. Please. I'm marked. Oh no, damn it. I have the scarlet letter of license plates. And I had an entire month of driving in anti-California land ahead of me. This was going to be interesting. Actually, I texted my buddy who lives in Montana and I told him about my license plates and he was like, you're going to get a lot of middle fingers by the time you get up here. God. Oh, no. It's getting keyed.
Everybody wants to know about the homeless problem here. Well, it's a thing, and it's getting worse. Long-timers complain about how nice this city was and how the bums are moving in and ruining downtown. Well, I walked around downtown, and yeah, it's a thing on just about every block. There's people laying around and wandering around on the sidewalks. But it's nothing like what I saw in other cities out west. Most of the sidewalks downtown are very clean and poop-free for now. Salt Lake City does have that mini skid row on the edge of downtown that I showed you earlier. That's pretty bad. Property crimes and drug use are exploding here. Salt Lake City's headed for the top 10 in some of these bad categories, and a lot of that's because of the homeless problem that's coming in. They've spent a lot of money and time trying to solve this, but it's not going away. There's more than 2,000 homeless people in this county now. It's terrible. And just six years ago, the city announced, hey, we've eradicated the homeless problem. See everyone? What's so hard about it? We did it. Why can't you? <laughs> As Salt Lake City's learning, this problem is very hard to solve. In fact, it's becoming almost uncontrollable, said one Salt Lake City councilman not too long ago. I know, right? Well, welcome to the real world, dude. Uh, I ride by and I see people shooting up drugs, smoking meth, crack, heroin, uh, and going in. And being drunk and going in. Into the resource center. Into the resource center. So if it's zero tolerance, what is considered zero tolerance? Uh, we, turn our, we turn our head and look the other way. I talked to one homeless guy named Fred who was working on a plan to get off the streets. Cool guy. He told me the shelters here aren't being managed correctly. That didn't surprise me. He also told me he knows for a fact that the shelters are reselling donations that people give them. Like, if you drop off blankets and shoes and socks, they'll resell them and make money instead of giving them to homeless people? Who does that? Brett also tells me that most of the homeless addicts in Salt Lake City spend 40000 a year on drugs and booze. Can you imagine? He said that he was spending more than $100 a day to support his habit. $40,000? That's more than the average American makes. Jesus. Forty grand. You're spending forty grand on booze and drugs. Forty Damn. grand on booze and drugs and delivered, right? How much do you think the average person on the street spends a year? Forty grand. I mean, if you were forty grand, fifty. Can they get that money just asking people. Asking uh, people. Uh, selling their debit cards. Selling their debit cards. Or their selling TV. their pills that they get down at the center. I mean, I have people come by all day, offer to sell me pills. And I got seven years sobriety, and I'm not giving up on it. And uh, I stay strong. I've been up. I've been down. Uh, I ran companies. I've had two of my own businesses. Uh, you know, I've been on the top, and now I'm slowly climbing back up. And I think I told you I'm going to go truck driver yeah. school. Good for you, man. So you know, and that's a big thing, you know. That's an LDS temple, right there in the middle of downtown Salt Lake City. In case you didn't know, Mormons are a big deal in these parts. This part of Utah is the Mormon capital of the world. Two in three people in this state are Mormon. And right next door is another temple. Not just any temple, that's THE temple. Like, their headquarters. But it's under construction, sadly. They've already spent two years working on this remodel of this giant temple downtown, and they say it's going to be three more years until it's done. I asked a construction worker what was wrong with the original temple, and he said, nothing. <laughs> well, I guess if you got the money, you might as well spend it, right? Here's what that giant temple looks like when it's not under construction. Very impressive, huh? And no, I don't know what goes on in there. They won't let you and me in.
And here's the part when I talk about politics. So if you don't like it, then fast forward about a minute or two. Of course, when a lot of people move into an area, it's going to change the dynamics of the place. The politics of Utah are being threatened with all the new growth. This has been a very conservative state for a long time. I mean, two-thirds of Utah's Mormon, and Mormons are the opposite of liberal. I mean, they won't even let you drink coffee, much less smoke pot or talk about sex change in their schools. Well, as you might think, all these new people moving in are diluting that Mormon influence. There are signs of liberal creeping in all the time now. For the first time, Salt Lake City is now less Mormon than Mormon. And that just happened last year. And walking around downtown, I can tell you this city feels way more liberal than the stats say it is. You may not know it, but Salt Lake City was called the gayest city in the country by an online gay publication. That's shocking, isn't it? That Salt Lake City's more gay than LA and San Francisco? But it's true. Salt Lake City is 54% gay. <laughs> JK, it's like 5%. But that's still really high. And four of this city's seven council members are gay as of this writing. And that is a majority. I saw more gay flags and gay friendly places than I think I've ever seen outside of California. I knew it was gay friendly, but I didn't expect that. I think every bar and restaurant I went into had some sort of gay pride posted somewhere. Even the bathrooms are gender neutral. Kinda. So while Utah as a whole is very conservative, Salt Lake City proper is not that at all. And it's getting more liberal every day here. Salt Lake City might feel big, but it's really just a mid-sized city. I mean, there's sprawl all over the place, but Salt Lake City proper only has about 200,000 people here. And there's not a lot of room to grow in the city limits unless you want to go up. That's because of mountains and a big smelly lake. I'll tell you what, there's construction everywhere here. It's downtown, all along the freeways, out in the burbs. I mean, that's a good sign, I guess, right? I mean, there's plenty of jobs here and a lot more to do than you might expect. Parts of Salt Lake can feel fun depending on what you like to do. There's a big art scene and lots of nature. The food scene, though, it's pretty bad. I wasn't impressed by the dining options at all. But downtown's nice and clean and there aren't many bums. We saw people playing pickleball in a nice downtown court, and there's this nice new fancy shopping mall downtown that's bum free. No smashing grabs here, huh? You can't have nice stuff like this in California, can ya? It looks like it's brand new. I can see why people wanna live here. It's cheaper and cleaner, and people are in a much better mood than the people in California are. And I didn't really see any traffic. Here's their local news traffic report. LOL emoji. 10 minutes. Come on now. This Friday morning, there is no traffic. Okay, so what about the neighborhoods? The northeast part of Salt Lake City is where all the rich people live. Areas like Arlington Hills and the Avenues over by the University of Utah are where the 1% are. Basically, anything up against the hillsides is where the big fancy homes are. So I drove up there to see what all the fuss was about. The Avenues is pretty nice. It's all small, antique-looking homes where all the rich show-offs want to live. Nice areas though, I have to say. There really isn't anything affordable left in Salt Lake City. 
There was one home for sale under 300K when I checked before I left. One, people. Man, oh man. Of course, you people are sick, and you want to know what the bad hoods look like. I know, I get it. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but there really aren't any ghettos in Salt Lake City. Now, there's some parts of town that are far more run down and dangerous than other parts, but generally, their hoods aren't scary. I think the out-of-touch people here think they're bad, but they are not bad. I guess they do have a gripe though. Pockets of SLC are getting worse. Crime's going up a ton, but they're still not in the top 100 in the country yet. For the last minute, we've been driving around in Poplar Grove. It's a neighborhood that has a bad reputation. The average home price in America is 350K, and there's nothing in here under that. So Utah's hoods are expensive, everyone. South Salt Lake and West Valley City are communities that everyone in Utah says are bad. Well, here's what those places look like. I just drove around a random street in South Salt Lake to see what all the hype was about. It's generally lower middle class, I guess. I spent an hour trying to find a really truly bad area here, and this was the baddest I could find. I know, right? West Valley City is another burb with a bad reputation. Here's what that looks like. I think it's worse here than anywhere else in the area, but still good for bad. There's hardly anything here under $400,000 in these hoods. No wonder people here are struggling to keep themselves going. Huh, everyone? Who can afford that? We'll talk more about Utah's worst hoods in another video. But good lord, Utah, you guys sure do live in a damn bubble, I tell ya. And we're gonna look at some of the suburbs of Salt Lake City really quickly so you get an idea on what it's like. And I have to tell ya, all the stuff down on the south side in Mormon land is really, really nice and clean. As you leave Salt Lake City, you come into what's called Utah Valley, or Utah County. Down here, south of Salt Lake, the culture is far different than in Salt Lake City proper. Three quarters of the population down here speaks Mormon, but in places like Orem and Provo, it's closer to 90%. Now I'm going to do a whole nother video on just the Mormons, but here's a couple places I wanted to show you. Right now, we're in Orem, Utah. Now, this probably wouldn't be a place for you to live if you're a real extrovert or you're not Mormon. <laughs> I mean, they're nice people, but your kids might have trouble making friends and you might have trouble making friends. But it all looks very nice, huh, everyone? Homes in Orem are in the $500,000 range. And down the road is Provo, Utah. This is where BYU is, so it is Mormon here, mister. It's a little cheaper than Provo, since there's some low-income student housing in the area. But generally, it too is very buttoned up and clean. And look at this downtown, everyone. Provo, Utah has one of the neatest little downtowns I've been to. And I didn't think I'd say that. Again, not too many liberals down here. But good people, the Mormons are. They're friendly and they wave. And the whole area looks so nice and clean and safe. That's the Mormon way. Don't expect to be invited in for a drink, but they're good neighbors, I suppose. Sure beats a lot of the crummy areas I've seen in my life. And I'm sure everybody appreciates how empty the roads are on Sunday. 
Look at that. 10.53 a.m. and no one's about. But you guys need to watch my video that specifically talks about the Mormon church in Utah. You'll be shocked when you see how many LDS churches are packed into this valley. Like an obscene amount. And then there's the lake. Now there is a big worry about this lake. Let me tell you that. Right now the lake doesn't look too bad because they got a lot of rain and snow in the area last year. But the year before, it was bad. It's like this all over the West. Lakes and reservoirs are drying up because of a drought and because, well, millions of people are living in a damn desert. I've heard that people are worried that if this lake dried up, there would be all sorts of noxious, dirty clouds blowing around the area, like arsenic or something. That would suck. This wouldn't be the best place to live if that happened, would it? I also heard they were talking about filling the lake up with concrete if it ever dried out. That sounds lovely. Smells. Yuck. But nobody swims in this lake. It smells bad and it's just gross. I don't even know what fish you'd catch. I tried to walk down to it and stick a foot in, but to get to it would have meant getting my feet muddy and stinky and I wasn't down with that. This was only the first day on the trip. Couldn't ruin my shoes on the first day, right? Did you know there's a monster in that lake? It's called the North Shore Monster. <laughs> Are you serious? That thing? That looks like a kid drew it. Did you draw that, Mappy? I'm not lying. It's real. History says this mythical creature was spotted in 1877. And someone else saw a dolphin monster once. <laughs> well, maybe if the lake dries up, they'll finally find that mythical creature. Sorry, everybody. Mappy's apparently lost his mind. What? When I was out and about in Salt Lake City, I did a lot. I mean, I was here for three damn days. Utah is very proud of inventing fry sauce, which is basically just mayo and ketchup mixed. I know, not very exciting. They also love funeral potatoes. That's because the Mormons eat that a lot. So I went to Fat Jack's to try both. I ordered the Mormon burger. <laughs> yes, that's a thing. And it comes with fried funeral potatoes on top, which I removed to sample them. And they are mm 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 mm. Funeral potatoes. The fry sauce is okay, I guess. It's not amazing or anything. There's also artwork in the bathrooms here. That's neat, I guess. So edgy, Salt Lake. So edgy. Hold on, I'm going pee. So I thought this was a real hoot. So after the day I ate there, I saw Fat Jack's promoting a Joseph Smith boner burger. If that doesn't show you how much this area is lightened up about the Mormon thing, my God. Mormons also love their Jello. I think Jello is the official state food. It was even on the Olympic pin, which is just random. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but I couldn't find anybody that actually served Jell-O, and I tried. I even asked a bunch of places if they had Jell-O shots, and nobody did. I was like, where's all the Jell-O? Somebody told me he thinks Mormons eat so much Jell-O because they can hide booze in it, since drinking's frowned upon and all. Is that what's happening with the Jell-O? Is that why they like it so much? Salt Lake City is a lot more hip than I thought it would be. I saw some way cooler haircuts than I ever had. One night I saw an Asian lady with a mullet. I've never seen that before. Sorry, Asian lady. I even saw one of those I write poems on a typewriter, guys. The fashion here is kind of eh, though. I don't know if that's hip or just thirsty. 
walking around one day downtown, I saw a robot just kind of chilling out on a corner. That's pretty hip and techy and cool, I suppose. I haven't seen that in a city I've visited before. It just kind of went around in circles, though. I was sent to a speakeasy called the Bodega in downtown Salt Lake. That was a real treat. How hip is Salt Lake? Let's find out. Oh, it is, yeah. Look at this place with their secret dark fancy drink thing going on. I mean, the menu was very impressive. My drink had avocado creme. Here's how cool the place is. That's their water dispenser. And they have a lot of stuffed animals here for some reason, like we're in Wyoming or something. Not yet, people. That state's coming up. What are you doing, Mr. Moose? Speaking of breweries, I went to the Squatters Pub Brewery because, you know, Salt Lake City says it's a brewery town. Utah has a bunch of strict drinking laws. They've lightened up here a lot, but it's still odd. Like, no bar can serve beer that's over 5%. And if you go to a restaurant and you order a beer, they'll give you one, but if you want a second beer, you have to order food first. Lame. At the Salt Lake City Airport, I saw a beer called Polygamy, and they also have a vodka called Five Wives Vodka. My God. See, I told you they were chilling out on all the Mormon stuff. One night downtown Salt Lake, I went to Gracie's and listened to a band outside. I got the baked potato. Wasn't very exciting, but for the first time on the trip, I saw a cowboy hat. There you go, hombre. I'd see a lot more of that on this trip. I just knew it. If you know me, you know I love me some Del Taco. Well, the closest Del Taco to my house is in Atlanta. So whenever I see one, I stop. And they are all over the Salt Lake City area. So I had to stop and get some of that. Yum. And Lori Darlin. Here we go. Uh-oh. Rush start. Stay home, Stan. Straight up. And guess what? I went to a real PRCA rootin' tootin' dirt in your Spurs rodeo. Dudes from all over the Mountain West came down to Salt Lake City to try to win a buckle in some purdy lady's heart. I don't even know what to say. Why do you like rodeoing? No, it's just something to do and it's a good time. Love the people, love the horsemanship. What's your name? Howard Hutchings. Where are you from? Springville, Utah. Great times. I'll show a lot more of this radio in another video. Clap <laughs> your hands for the beat of the music, Utah. You ought to know this one. It's not. You've been living under a rock, apparently. And for my sleeping quarters, I stayed at the awesome Peary Hotel right in downtown. Neat place. Awesome staff. I highly recommend it. And one bonus, it's haunted. People see weird shapes. And one time a lady got locked in her bathroom. Not fun. The hotel guy told me that there's a door in the basement that he says always slams shut on him when he goes down there in the middle of the night. So I had to go down there in the middle of the night to see that. Stick around at the end of the video to see what happened. Door slam. Door slam. Utah! Who'd have thunk that Utah would ever be our country's MVP, huh? But it is. You can see why it's so popular and why people are raving about it. Most of the people here are nice and kind and many are welcoming and generous. It's still way cheaper than California and it's way safer here than most other places I've been. 
boy, is this place changing fast. It's like a cheap Colorado now. And all the growth, it's brought in all the problems that Utah had been immune to. You know, crime, drugs, smog, expensive, homelessness. I like it here. I don't love it here, but it's not a bad place to be. It's way more liberal here than I thought it would be. And this place has loosened up, let me tell you. But outside of Boston, this might be my favorite liberal city I've been to. But as this state grows, and as home prices skyrocket, and crime goes up, and pollution increases, they're going to have to figure out how to manage all that. They're already complaining about dirty air, and hardly any of LA has even got here yet. They already think the homeless problem is bad, and they don't even have tent cities yet. Wait till the junkies take over. Then you're big time, Utah. Will Utah get ruined? Probably. Us Americans have a way of doing that to our new toys. No, I hope not. We need some good left in this country, right? This was just the first stop on a journey that would take 32 days and cross into seven different states out this way. It was actually pretty nice to take a break from the ghettos of this country for a while. I know, bad stuff is what you people want to see, but this was an amazing trip, and you should watch every second of it. So, uh, Sam, I wanted to talk to you about Salt Lake City. You're uh, fairly new to the area, which is the kind of the perspective that I wanted to get. Um, I spent three or four days in Salt Lake City, and, you know, I like it. Um, I don't love Salt Lake City. I grew up in Southern California. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that um, yeah. without a lot of the bad stuff that Southern California has. I can, I can see why people want to move there. I get it. Um, it's not as cheap as it once was. And I think that that oh. is sort of a, a bad thing in terms of, I mean, everybody was like, Oh my God, it's warm kind of, and, and it's cheap and it's, you know, there's no bums everywhere. And now it's not cheap and there's bums moving in. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do people feel about how Salt Lake city is kind of growing and changing? I guess it just depends on who you ask. So for some people, I guess some demographics and portions of Utah, uh, they feel it's positive and other people feel it's very negative. So there's a divided opinion about it, I think. Mm -hmm. What are, what are some of the, let's talk good first. Um, what okay. are some of the positives about Salt Lake city and Utah in general that, that you and, and others have, have seen? Uh, I think people are excited about the increased diversity, uh, just it, it, not just ethnic diversity, but but also uh, cultural activity wise, uh, different events that are able to come through. So the Salt Lake City area is is less Mormon. It's it's much more liberal overall. And so, yeah, I think people like that liberal ideals uh as i think they like having a city center to where they have a lot of different events and activities to go to and, and to enjoy um and, and so for that demographic of people that 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 progressiveness is something that people really embrace um and you, you know I, so i guess it just depends on who you are and the cons of course is on the opposite end of that where people feel like maybe some values uh that they they hold dear are slipping and that uh that the city's going downhill whereas other people see it as, as a progressive move in nature of it um for me one thing i like about salt lake city is the abundance of parks everywhere and so there's a lot of public parks uh Public transportation is pretty good. Um, there's uh, you, uh, tons of like uh, options for bike riding or doing something alternative in that way, which is pretty progressive. That's pretty good. Um, so 
I like those things personally. Yeah. yeah. When you mentioned the, the, the people who don't like to change uh, and, and their value, are you referring to the Mormon population that it's kind of like we're losing our grip on the politics of Salt Lake city and the ways the city's run with all these new people coming in, I'm guessing. Uh, yes. The large portion of that would be Mormons. I mean, there's other religious groups who, who would side with the Mormons on the progressive uh, equation or politically. Uh, but, but yes, the Mormons themselves, uh, e even from an organizational level, uh, sometimes I see stuff pop up now that I'm in Utah. I'm part of a ex Mormon Reddit group. I'm not ex Mormon, but I just watch what comes through. And, uh, yeah, there's bishops pushing people to go vote, uh, telling them what to vote for. And so, uh, I think the church is getting very involved in the politics, uh, of, of, you, you know, voting, uh, and, and controlling, the political spectrum, I guess, as much as it can in this state. Mm -hmm. And so they do have concerns and they are encouraging their members uh, 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 to go out and vote and vote specifically for church picked candidates. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of people and I'm doing a whole video, a separate video just on the Mormon influence in the area. Um, I didn't really yeah. talk about the Mormon culture too much in this video. I will in, in the next video. But from what I gather, um, there's a there's a the church is concerned about the loss of membership and kind of being out of touch with the current reality of the world. And so they're um, trying to actively do what they can to keep their numbers up while 16 to 19 year old kids don't really care about um, yeah. religion, much less, you know, hardcore conservative Mormon values. They're, they're like. What's wrong with tattoos? I just want pink hair. Like I want to be gay, maybe. Um, and so I, you know, that's something I'm going to get into another in another video. Um, I I did though wonder, it, do you think what's the vibe there? Um, is Utah ever going to be blue? I, I know that Salt Lake City is very progressive, a lot more liberal than I thought it was going to be for a very hardcore red state. But yeah. it's hard for me to envision. Utah being so hardcore Republican when the biggest area and the center of the state is so blue. It, it, do people think Utah could switch and become like a Democrat state one day? Uh, I, d I don't know. Um, I mean, we've seen states flip before, like Florida or other states. That, that that have flipped and maybe Utah could progressively become a swing state if more people came in. I, I don't think without more people migrating to Utah, that's that's going to be a quick change. Uh, I think that LDS Church, for a lot of its younger demographics, millennials and, and younger, uh, kind of burnt a lot of bridges and a lot of those individuals uh, left the church or have left the church. They definitely uh, they, they go swing red to blue. Uh, so they end up embracing more liberal ideals, kind of, a, I, I guess, as a rebellion, as a reaction to the church, you, you know? And I've seen that a lot. Uh, so it's possible in the younger generations that a lot of the, the raised LDS, you, you know, individuals, millennials and on, that they'll, they'll shift. I don't know. But... I think it would take a lot just for the current population to, to turn into a swing state. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, most of the suburbs are, are still pretty hardcore conservative. I drove, oh, yeah. I drove the whole Wasatch front, the, the North suburbs like Ogden and Logan all the way down past Provo Orem, like yeah. pretty much the end. And that's all very nice and prim and proper Mormon land where it's so clean and safe. And, um, yeah, Ogden's about the the. You've got Ogden is known as like one of the rougher places, less LDS. I've lived there. Uh, it's not bad, even even for all of that. And Ogden's not as rough as it used to be. Now you go down to West Valley City, some of those areas, those are known uh, down there, that part. Uh, but as soon as you get below that, down in towards Provo, anything else, uh, Lehigh, um, or um. All of that area is extremely LDS. Sandy's extremely LDS. Midvale's extremely LDS. I mean, 
there's little spots that are a little less so, but they're small. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I, and I'm going to show this in another video. I was, I drive around. There'd be, there'd be Mormon churches on both sides of the, uh, on yeah. the intersection, one on one corner, one on the other. And then in the distance, you can see temple. I mean, it's just like an obscene amount of churches in some of these neighborhoods. And I'm like, good for you guys for having such a stronghold. But man, like how many, you know, what's even crazier those churches, each of those buildings that you saw, they'll have two, three, four wards that attend. So that church is, has three to four different congregations that, that, that attend every Sunday. And so one congregation comes and attends and leaves. And the next one with a new bishop comes, attends and leaves. And they, they just use, so it isn't, it's, it's even more dense than, than a single church would be elsewhere where you just have that one population that comes two times on Sunday. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Those two churches on both sides will both have multiple services with multiple congregations every Sunday. You mentioned uh, West Valley City. So I went to West Valley City, went to South Salt Lake. Um, I, I was told those are the worst places in Salt Lake City and perhaps yeah. the worst places in Utah. And it was kind of laughable how nice those areas were compared to yeah. what most yeah. people would consider bad. I mean, I drove around for an hour trying to find a, a really a street that was photographically yeah. evident of how bad what you all think is bad. And I'm like, come on, Utah. Like, this is all you got here. You're in a little bubble if you think this is bad. Yes, a lot, a lot. I agree with you. I've lived in different places. You, you know, I've lived in the Southeast for a number of years. Where I grew up, which I told you, was, you know, Wyoming County, West Virginia. I was born in McDowell County, West Virginia. So that that's just abject poverty everywhere and, and, and drugs everywhere and violence everywhere and so I, I i grew up seeing violence in the neighborhood you know on a pretty regular basis people you, you know everything from murders to you, you know drug deals just openly done in front of my house and uh so and then i've lived in orlando florida you, you know and that has some hoods and some rough areas uh, in the greater orlando area for sure and then i move here and it's nice. <laughs> and then I live in one of the nicest towns. Like if you look in the top 10 list of even Utah, I live like pretty high up on that top 10 list. So I feel like I'm living in Mayberry now compared to where I was at. But the cost of living is pretty rough. So I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people flocked to the Utah area because they're like, oh, my God, this is all really super nice. And it's yeah. affordable and it's still within a, a short plane ride to home. But the, the affordable part is no longer. It's like more than 500 grand for a house in Utah. And it's, and it's not even that nice of a house. No, it's not that nice of a house for half a million dollars. Are, are people... Are people like, oh, God, um, we're going to have to leave? Or do you hear of anybody that just can't afford it that's just going to bail after only being there for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I mean, I personally consider it all the time. Uh, I mean, it, it's when, when you're allocating thirty to $40,000 of your income every year to, to just having a, a, a roof over your head and then trying to deal with bills and, and any other portion of life and then with – the other things with inflation, the cost of transportation going up, everything else, fuel costs are relatively high in Utah compared to surrounding states. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think about moving all the time. I mean, and then where I live, you know, in the summer, you've got to deal with the summer stuff. But in the winter, you also have to think about uh, snow control. So, you know, living here, you know, it's I've lived here and done it with a snow shovel for a couple of years. I want a snow blower so bad. I had 17 feet of snowfall. So it's it's even just an investment of time. It's an investment of equipment for snow blowers. Uh, then, uh, you know, you buy a small snow blower and depending on where you live, it might work. But but then you have to buy, you know, like a thousand dollar snow blower and then you have to have a vehicle capable and then you have to worry about what tires to buy and changing those out several times a year. So the, the overall cost, even I feel like on the list doesn't truly appreciate the, the overall cost of living here and properly living here. So yeah, think about moving I've, other people are moving, thinking about moving. Uh, 
everybody I know pretty much is struggling. God. And, and a lot of the people I've talked to, um, they have regular good jobs. You know, they're not yeah. like part time. The jobs pay well here. The job market pays very well here comparatively to other places. Yeah. Yeah. And and they still are kind of like struggling to. Um, and the, the problem is a lot of people moved there um, from Southern California or the West Coast. And they're like, OK, we can settle here. We have three kids. That This is very much better than where we left in Oakland or whatever. Um, and right. then they're like, you know, five years later. Um, my kids aren't going to be able to afford a house here. Like they're, they're no. not going to be able to live next to us. So I think a lot of families are worried that um, in 10 years, 15 years, like they're like, we're going to have to move away or our kids are going to leave if we don't, you know, figure this Everybody's, out. Everybody's like, uh, it, it, there's an older population kind of in the neighborhood where I live now. And uh, I've gotten to talk to a lot of them, uh, be friends with a few of them. Uh, because I'm retired military myself, so I have a little extra time. And uh, so uh, I've noticed that none of their kids live in the state and, and couldn't afford to live in the state. And those older folks are struggling to just, they own the house. Their parents own the house that they own now. So this house has been, you know, in their family for generations. And they can't, they're struggling to even pay the property tax now. They own the house outright. But now they're paying, you know, a thousand dollars plus several thousand dollars a a, a a a month, basically in property tax, just because, uh, you know, a, an acre of land can go for more than a million dollars just just for grass or trees or whatever. Well over a million dollars just for an acre, yeah, with nothing on it, <laughs> unimproved, yeah, like you you know, if making fifteen dollars an hour doesn't even provide you a place to live here. You're going to have to have multiple people. Uh, younger people all have roommates. They're all trying to rent rooms for about $800 a month for a room in somebody's house. A lot of people, that's also what they're doing so they can afford their life. They're renting out rooms in their house and that's all over here, all over. That, so that's, I think, a, a, how dire the situation is, if that makes sense. So I see that and I see more people on the street, but there's still a, a coping mechanism in the middle there of renting rooms, bending together to, to afford an apartment, roommates. Uh, I, I have, you know, people that I know, friends that I know that live with their parents still. Um, yeah. Like uh, making six figures here is still a recipe to struggle. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard you got to make at least a hundred grand just to keep yourself normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then that's not the reason that a lot of people move to that area. They move there for a better life where they could kind of, yeah. you know, and it is still, believe me, much better than Southern California by oh, yeah. far. But, oh, yeah. And it's know, beautiful here too. I mean, you, you yeah. can't deny Utah is a beautiful state, very diverse from the Southern end to the northern end and then even east to west it's it's uh, so the great outdoors uh a lot of outdoor recreation is available in the state the relative safety there are good paying jobs and the job market and, and a lot of things about the city is still growing so you've got the growth of a city it, yeah it's, there's positives but it's still uh you know, it's you. I guess you got to take a cautious approach a little bit to moving here. I would encourage people because it is hard if you, you end up on the lower end of that. Like yeah. then you just move here to struggle and that's not really fun. It's been called the best place to live in the country, Utah and Salt Lake City Metro. Do you feel yeah. like you live in the best place in the country right now? <sighs> Nick, that's a hard question. I've lived in a lot of different places. I definitely feel like the town that I live in is the safest, nicest town that I've ever lived in. And I think you would be challenged to find another town like the one I live in anywhere in Utah. In Salt Lake City, I think, uh, yeah, that's one of the better cities in the U.S. in some ways. But if nightlife or other things are really your thing, it's a struggle uh, I, I really don't care about that, but that's a complaint that some people have. Uh, things close really early during the week. 
You know, you try to go pick up food for your pet after like seven and pet goes like done, shut down. We're going home. And so everything, restaurants closed down early. So it's a little bit quirky for, you know, other places might have an advantage there. I really don't know. Like uh, nowhere you're completely safe, not even here. Uh, you know, crimes happen in Utah. They happen in Salt Lake City. Uh, how does somebody say, you know, best for who, for what person, for what interest? Uh, so, I mean, obviously I'm thinking about moving again. Uh, so I'm hoping still to find a, a better place for my overall equation. But I, I don't know. Is it, it's, it's safe. It's beautiful. It's clean. You know, I, I, I'm not going to complain, I guess. So I don't know how to answer your question, Nick. Yeah, no, uh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's it, it's still to be determined. Yeah, I, you know, I think there's there's a few other cities that kind of remind me of Salt Lake City that I've been to, um, that are like at that perfect point. Maybe have kind um, Omaha, Nebraska, Raleigh, North Carolina, um, Boise, yeah. up yeah. in Idaho. I, Raleigh, like, I've been through Omaha. Both of those are similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Omaha, and, I wouldn't have put up there until you said it, but yes, and Raleigh, North Carolina, very much so. Yeah, I would see that as well. They want you sober. They want you so you're not being a menace to society and taking 80,000 pounds on the highway when you could kill multiple people. So they want that out of you. And I mean, that's my plan for me and this little guy here, Charlie, to go cross country and uh, see different parts. And I don't want to give up on people. So what I'll do is, uh, I always tell people I appreciate the food more than the money and I appreciate the camaraderie. People stop and recognize that I'm a human being, uh, that you know, I'm just not some piece of wood on the side of the street. I'm a person with feelings. And to recognize that, I mean, this gentleman here took time out of his day to get to know me. And I mean, that means a lot to me. And like I said, I'm gonna, when I start driving truck, I will do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I will do water. And if I see somebody on the side of the road, wherever in whatever city I'm in, I'll get out and give them food, give them water and give them a blessing. Do you have a Venmo or a um, cash app or PayPal or anything that people could donate to? Because a lot of people might see it. Do you have a way I, that anyone could donate I to I don't, I try okay. getting Venmo, but my no, phone no number was used you. before. Okay, yeah. all right. So, I mean, I don't have nothing. I mean, uh, just like I like tell people, recognize the person, always weigh on the side of caution. I mean, you want to help somebody. Uh, big thing during the winter is socks, yeah. gloves, right. hand warmers, hats, things that they can really use, especially the socks, because your feet get wet during the winter time, and once your feet get wet, you get a chance of hyperthermia setting in. So I mean, and I did a thing one year for uh, a community outreach, and I said to people, I said, donate a blanket. You can save somebody's life tonight. You know, and colder weather will be coming, and I don't know where, you, where people will see this, but always remember that blanket will save somebody's life. You know, they may use it for one night, but that one night may save their lives. And the kindness that you show by donating blankets, socks, a hat, uh, people remember that. And people that come along and meet me, I always encourage them, you know, it's not so much as about the money as it is about the kindness. So the guy that works at the hotel told me that the door at the end of the hallway slams shut on him a lot. So I'm gonna go look. He said it's the door right past the fitness center by the elevator. That door. Apparently this door slams shut or that door. <gasps> oh shit. Is this the haunted room? 
<laughs> this doesn't feel haunted. Or does it? Or is it this door? Which door slams? If that door slams, I swear to God. This is actually creepy. Dang it, I really wish. Maybe I need to leave it open. Okay. I work here. Door slam. Door slam. Slam. Ghosts just never appear to me. <sighs> Maybe it's that door. That doesn't count. If there's a ghost, slam that door. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting, that's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.